Adamo is a 14-year-old boy who, in, as an infant, uh, suffered a very serious burn uh, that essentially disfigured his entire face and most of his body. And for the last 14 years, he's been living with this disfigurement. And fortunately, because of the limited resources in Bosnia, they haven't been able to get Amo the care or the treatment that he needs in order to help. I really didn't have a particular place to start, but I recall having uh, received many, many emails from AMHP, American Muslim Health Professionals, and basically I sent out an email to AMHP and kind of basically shared Ramos' story in detail, and alhamdulillah, after the involvement of many, many people to make this happen, uh, Ramo and his mother came from Bosnia to Southern California, and he had his first of many reconstructive surgeries a little before Ramadan. The Muslim healthcare community in the United States is highly knowledgeable, experienced, and well-resourced, but largely fragmented across different professions and academic disciplines. American Muslim Health Professionals is a national nonprofit organization that was started in 2004 to bridge that gap by providing a platform to connect Muslims in diverse sectors of healthcare and to create opportunities for professional development. The larger goal of AMP is to leverage the collective skills, education, and expertise of this network of health professionals to better serve the public health needs of their communities. Since the organization's founding almost a decade ago, our members have been at the forefront of public health and policy issues, mobilizing Muslims during the health reform debates at the start of the Obama administration, championing community-based anti-obesity measures, creating resources for disabled Muslims, and most recently, elevating the discussion around mental health. You know, it's important to, to follow the work of the American Muslim health professionals because as an imam, I'm in a unique position in that I'm a licensed therapist also. But there are many imams who don't know anything about therapy, don't know anything about mental health. And if they are sought out, because a lot of times the community may think that the imam is the specialist in everything, from the janitor to a surgeon. And so it's important that imams stay in their lane. And if they have people in the community that they can refer to, they need to develop referral lists and use groups like the American Muslim Health Professionals to be able to have a, a list of, of competent therapists who are able to understand Muslim, Islam from a cultural perspective and able to address the needs of Muslims. In 2014, AMP launched EnabledMuslim.org, an online network to provide spiritual and community support for Muslims living with disabilities and their families. They felt really isolated. They felt like they were the only ones in their community who were experiencing um, certain difficulties. The idea um, to form Enabled Muslim was in part to help connect people with one another. We want people to empower them and they have them to be a full members of the Muslim community. Have every right like anyone else, have accessibility to the masjid, accessibility to the event. Every person has something to contribute to the community. You have to create a platform and an environment for them to be productive and to have that participation. There is a, a huge turning point that I think we're seeing um, just this year in the Muslim community. And more and more I keep finding people who are talking about disability issues, who have a greater awareness, and a lot of that is due to the amazing work of uh, disability activists who've been doing this for decades in our communities. One of those activists is Dilshad Ali, chair of Enabled Muslims Advisory Board and board member of Muhsin. Dilshad is a mother of an autistic teenager and was recognized as White House Champion of Change for raising awareness and advocating for the rights of those with special needs. AMP has developed policy briefs and engaged congressional representatives on the critical role of Muslim-free clinics as well as the importance of comprehensive health reform. AMP organized educational workshops around the country to educate Muslims on the Federal Health Reform Bill and was invited to the official signing when the Affordable Care Act, or ACA, became law. This year, AMP launched Connecting Muslims to Coverage, an outreach campaign to inform Muslims about the new health insurance marketplace. In partnership with other Muslim organizations, nearly 27,000 individuals were educated about their coverage options, and over 1,600 individuals successfully enrolled in a health insurance plan. AMP's program manager for this campaign was honored for her work as a White House champion of change. AMHP was one of 14 organizations invited to a private roundtable with President Obama to discuss the important work that American Muslim health professionals are doing in their communities. 
to the professionals and to others across our community that are standing up and supporting him. I think you are really helping to uh, pioneer the type of institutional building and capacity building that our community needs at this time to connect healthcare providers uh, in the Muslim community across America and to begin to, again, champion a voice that is concerned both about the state of health of people right there in their clinics and also concerned about the quality of the policies that are affecting the most marginalized sectors of our population. Muslims are mandated by their faith to look after one another's well-being and address the needs of the underserved, and this is AMP's mission. It is what drives our members to do the work they do to advance public health, social justice, and civic engagement within their communities. My father-in-law and my mother-in-law, uh, when they came to visit us uh, over the summer, they actually had a chance to visit Ramu in person, and they were really, really happy to meet him. They, were, they, were, you know, they could share nothing except you know, his happiness. I mean, he was... He was it was exactly as a 14-year-old boy should be. Really, had it not been for AMP, Ramo would not have had the treatment that he has had 